In sharing the vision implementation team summary, I want to start with some background. In September of 2020, Sharing Our Story was presented to the congregation in which the history of St. Matthew's Church and its impact on the Louisville community was shared. Following the presentation, church members engaged in listening groups in which they discussed what drew them to be a part of our community at St. Matthew's, how the church currently serves our mission, and what we could do that we aren't yet doing. The vestry met in October 2020 to consider the feedback from the congregation and to set new goals for the church. At that meeting, the mission of St. Matthew's was affirmed, core values were named, and new three-year goals were determined. The vision implementation team was created to help shepherd the church toward these new goals and to keep track of our progress as we continue to go about our work as a community of disciples. The current, mission, the current members of the implementation team are Sarah Bailey, Phil Eschels, Robin Garr, Benjamin Hart, Kelly Kirby, Melissa Klassen, and Peggy Woolley. Here is a review of St. Matthew's mission statement, core values, and our three parish goals with an update on our progress toward each of them. Our mission at St. Matthew's Church is to be a caring, inclusive community centered in the Eucharist and grounded in the gospel so that we can reach out as Christ's hands to the world. Our core values at St. Matthew's are spiritual growth, we cultivate strong relationships with God through study, dialogue, and worship, and we are a supportive place for individuals and families to grow as Christians together. Social justice. We work to repair unjust structural systems in our community, including political, educational, housing, economic, judicial, environmental, health care, and immigration. Third, active involvement. We encourage full participation, worship, formation, service, from the entire membership of St. Matthew's. Serving others. We live out our Christian faith by service and charitable acts to our parish, families, and community. Intellectually curious. We learn with critical reflection and encourage different points of view. Welcoming. We foster a hospitable environment that embraces diversity in all its dimensions. Partnerships. We engage in partnerships with other faith communities outside of our congregation to share God's work in the world. This brings us to our current goals. Goal number one is to bring about community healing regarding social justice through prayer, relationships, and action with a particular focus on racial and environmental justice. As a note, racial and environmental justice are two of the three areas that the Episcopal Church has charged Episcopalians to work on, and we are aligning ourselves with the National Church in our efforts. A first 2022 benchmark for this goal was to host a sacred ground circle at St. Matthew's. Our progress includes hosting a sacred ground circle this year with 11 participants in the group who met for 11 sessions. A word about sacred ground circles. Sacred ground is a sensitive, prayerful resource that creates space for difficult but respectful and transformative dialogue on race and racism. It invites participants to walk back through history in order to peel away the layers that brought us to today, reflecting on family histories and stories as well as important narratives that shape the collective American story. It holds as a guiding star the vision of beloved community, 
where all people are honored and protected and nurtured as beloved children of God, where we weep at one another's pain and seek one another's flourishing. The first circle at St. Matthew's has met for 11 sessions to engage with the films, videos, written materials, and each other, a study group, essentially. Another 2022 benchmark was to keep a Kentucky Interfaith Power and Light Creation Keeper Partnership. Progress, we have completed this benchmark. In March, the Vestry voted to become a Kentucky Interfaith Power and Light Creation Keeper Partner, that is, to officially have Kipple as a partnering organization about Kentucky Interfaith Power and Light. Kipple is a community of congregations, faith-based organizations, and individuals of faith responding to climate change as an ethical and moral issue. Through advocacy, education, energy conservation, energy efficiency, stewardship, and the use and promotion of clean, renewable energy. Another 2022 benchmark is to continue to monitor St. Matthew's engagement in the work of social justice by adding events and announcements to the spreadsheet that was created. Progress. The spreadsheet tracks the parish's social justice efforts in four areas, gaining knowledge, responding to emergencies, taking care of physical needs, and changing the systems. The vision implementation team committed to monitoring our parish's progress on this goal by updating and evaluating a spreadsheet every year. This will give us a picture of the types and areas of work that the church is engaged in and where we might have gaps in that work. St. Matthew's has been very effective in pursuing goal one this year by engaging in social justice through prayer, relationships, and action. A few examples from this year include the new page on the website dedicated to social justice. There we connect people with our partner organizations and will present ways to get involved in the work of social justice with the church. Through the work of Sarah Sarisa, we were able to get the city of St. Matthews to plant the new trees along Massey Avenue at no cost to the church. On behalf of the church, Sarah also applied and received a grant to plant a pollinator garden on the grounds. This fall, we will be using a creation lectionary, which is a different set of Sunday readings in September and October, celebrating God's creation. Another 2022 benchmark is for the Environmental Justice Task Force to make a list of recommendations for the parish. Progress. This task force was created and met for the first time in March of this year, and they have continued to meet monthly since then. The members are Jan Schultz, Chair, Sarah Sarisa, Amy Lewis, Christine Newton, Ann Shelby, John Shelby, Rhody Streeter, Amy Tidwell, Robin Tricoli, and Sheila Ewell. The task force was charged with helping move the second part of one of our parish goals forward, to bring about community healing regarding social justice through prayer, relationships, and action with a particular focus on these two areas, racial justice, working with organizations in the West End of Louisville, and environmental justice. They were asked to do this in three ways. First was to invite the church to participate in lobbying or advocacy. The second task was to establish a connection between St. Matthew's and Kippel. And the third task was to find out what the Episcopal Church teaches about creation care. 
Following their work, the committee sent a final report to the vestry in August, including a list of recommendations. To participate in lobbying or advocacy, they asked the congregation to participate in the All People's Justice Center's postcard campaign to see if our congregation would engage with this type of outfacing environmental justice action. The postcard campaign was a lobbying campaign, and members of St. Matthew's were invited on March 22nd to send a postcard to Mayor Fisher. It read, Mayor Fisher, as you are preparing the city's upcoming budget, I hope you will be sure to include funding for solar energy. Previously, you endorsed the 2020 Metro Council resolution, which calls for 100% renewable energy for city operations by 2030. I feel it is critical that we begin to fund that transition as quickly as possible. Please consider budgeting at least $1 million for solar energy. Our future depends on your actions today. Sincerely, and the signee. About 70 postcards were sent. The first recommendation of the task force was that St. Matthew's should identify a parishioner who will be the point person for future collaboration with All Saints Justice Center. The second task was to establish a connection between St. Matthew's and Kentucky Interfaith Power and Light following the vestry's decision to become a creation keeper. A creation keeper partner. Two recommendations are related to this task. The rector should identify a parishioner who will be the point person for future collaboration with Kipple. And St. Matthew should take advantage of the two partner benefits we receive in 2023 from Kipple by working with the leaders of Klingman or Skillsharing to receive the 50% discount on two speakers or workshops, and with the Buildings and Grounds Committee to receive the 50% discount on one consultation or energy audit. The committee's third task was to learn what the Episcopal Church teaches about creation care. The task force made a visit to the Reverend Jer Dr. Jerry Kappel's farm and spent a morning learning from him and meeting his alpacas. Jerry had an unexpected message to share. Environmental actions should come from a changed heart, not just trying to look like we're doing the right thing. If St. Matthew's decides to replace light bulbs, it should be a theological convictions outward and visible sign. He thinks our church should focus on education that might lead to a sort of conversion that will ultimately result in changed behaviors. The task force spent the summer educating themselves and in the process, they shared many resources with one another and with the church. This led to recommendation four the rector will encourage the learning that might lead to environmental action as the best practice for introducing environmental engagement, including experimenting with the season of creation, September 1st through October 9th, 2022. Recommendation five, the parish will publish either an educational or an invitational announcement related to environmental justice each week in the weekend materials. Number six, the parish will engage and learn from parishioners who show the outward and visible signs of discernment around environmental justice that led to action. For example, Sarah Sarisa applying for and receiving a tree grant from St. Matt's through the city of St. Matthews and a pollinator garden rewilding grant through Idlewild. Number seven, once this report has been submitted to the vestry, the task force's work is complete. The rector should create an open invitation for the parishioners interested in environmental justice or already engaged in environmental justice to join an environmental justice steering committee. 
This committee will meet monthly on the first Sunday of the month at 4 p.m. Next steps. We will continue to engage the work of racial and environmental justice and each year monitor and review our engagement in these areas as a church. We will utilize the resources available to us from Kentucky Interfaith Power and Light. Goal number two, create a culture of radical welcome and deep connection. 2022 benchmark, the welcoming task force creates a list of recommendations for the parish. Progress, the welcoming task force was created and met in March, April, I'm sorry, in February, March, and April of 2022 to look at denominational resources and best practices around being a welcoming church for newcomers and visitors. The members of the task force are Ali Ahim, Phil Poor, Levon Fingerson, Robin Garr, and Benjamin Hart. The task force came up with a list of recommendations that were presented to the clergy, staff, and vestry. The recommendations were organized into three categories, invite, welcome, connect. These terms reflect the language of the denominational resources for different aspects of being a welcoming church. Here are the recommendations presented by the welcoming committee. Invite, first make sure the visitor postcard continues to be available in the narthex. Greeters know where it is and give thought to what is on the card. Second, keep the website up to date and make sure that the cataloged eSpirit newsletters are accessible. Third, use social media in a cohesive way across multiple platforms. Fourth, add instructions for how to subscribe to the eSpirit to the printed announcements. Five, advertise the app in the building. Have something saying how to download it and what we use it for. Six, continue to have community-facing events on the church grounds periodically. Welcome. Seven, improve interior signing. Add a sign about pe above people's heads that indicates the welcome desk. Add a sign pointing toward the restrooms at the welcome desk. Eight, when the clergy notice visitors at a service, Say a general welcome to any newcomers during the announcements. Nine, have information available at the welcome desk that newcomers may be interested in. Also have a place on the website that has the same information for newcomers. 10, teach the congregation to introduce themselves to people they don't know. Periodically publish a series of announcements written by the welcoming task force an invitation to introduce yourself. Please wear your name tag. Are you a friendly person who likes to meet people? Connect. Number 11, offer a listening skills training for the greeters and make it available to anyone else as well. This could be an adult ed session, part of our conversation with Brother Freihoff, or a separate training. 12. Encourage parishioners to take a visitor under their wing if they come back a few times and invite them to a class or an event. Next steps for this goal. The staff and ministry leaders are working to implement the task force's recommendations. The task force will meet again in November to review the progress on the recommendations and update the list if necessary. Goal number three, implement the long-term plan for investing in the skill sharing classes. 2022 benchmark, assist the Communities of Calling initiative in their efforts to meet this goal. Progress, the Communities of Calling initiative set the goal to host the first skill sharing class taught by a local celebrity chef this year. They achieved this in hosting an evening with Chef Anthony Lamas of Seveche 
on May 12th. The class was a success, raising money for AMPT and hosting an evening of conversation with Chef Lamas about his callings around cooking, hospitality, and his, patient, his passion for changing our society's relationship with food. Participants had this conversation with Chef Lamas while he prepared a three-course meal. Next steps. The vision implementation team will continue to monitor and support the growth of our skill-sharing social enterprise. 